so uh, you're an enemies. Yeah. 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 Uh, how's that? It's pretty technical. It's, uh, it's all right. Like. It's all right. Yeah. It's just drums. Like it's easy enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm. Yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty technical though. It's pretty. It's I, like. I suppose like there's. You're using your four limbs, I guess, but it's it's standard, standard enough stuff. Like, uh, I, uh, well, I do, like from listening to it. I mean, it sounds like you've got like eight arms or something. I, that, I'd say if you were listening from like not being very good, it might sound like that. But no, if you're able to kind of play a bit of drums, it's easy enough. Uh, I use it kind of to teach like the beginners that I'm teaching at the moment. <laughs> I went for it, I went for it, I didn't get to end quick enough. It was so close. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, I like that. That's good. in the basement, uh, just fixing my pants, back in the basement uh, once more talking drums and things that are generally kind of linked or maybe not linked to drums. Drums, with drums, drums. Drums, drums, drums. Show us your leg. Show us your leg. I don't know how to get out of the camera. It's, it's kind of there. It's drum. <laughs> drum. Drum, yeah. Stick with us. Stick with, there we go. Yeah. Um, drum. Um, uh, we're talking things that are drums with Mihal Quinn of Hello, hey, um, of Enemies, Melty Brains. Anyone else? Are you still Slow Skies? Yeah, Slow Skies. Slow Skies as well. Yeah. Uh, we first met actually. Well, we first met in here, but um, I think the, the first gig that we played together was that one in uh, in, in New, New York. York. Yeah. Um, where it was it was one of the last gigs that I was playing with the guys, and the lads were like starting to get at me like, well, what's the story with drummers and stuff like that. <laughs> And I thought, no better man, no better man <laughs> whatsoever to play the, the incredibly easy drums. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Most people could probably do it. It's, yeah, as you said, you know, for the, for the beginners, you know, for the kids who are struggling with uh, holding sticks in their hands, it's just, yeah, it's something very relatable, isn't it? It's warm up stuff. Yeah, warm up stuff. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's fucking tough. That's <laughs> grand. It's fine. Uh, it's not easy. Yeah, we, we first met over there anyway. You were playing with uh, with Karen, yeah. with those guys, which is beautifully haunting music. Um, uh, and yeah, I think it was that night. I think I said to you, "Here, do you want to do this?" Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, grand." <laughs> <laughs> I know it was very different. I remember, like, I think you should do it, and I was like, "Jesus, that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure to put no, on no, a guy, it's, man." It was fine. It was fine. But was I, fine. yeah, Mark and I. <laughs> Mark and Louis came up. I'm like, so you were thinking of you, yeah. And I hadn't played with Slow Skies yet, and I was like, oh, you're at this gig. Oh, like I can, I can really go for it. This one I have to hold back a lot. <laughs> and after I was like, yeah, 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 you, that, that was good. And I was like, I didn't really do much. I sort of went boom, click, boom, click. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, that's, oh, that's it. <laughs> so that's what they think is happening behind yeah. the drums. Oh well, there, <laughs> to bless them. Uh, well, I mean, Owen plays drums. He'd have an idea. Oh, he's fucking class at drums. He's really good. Yeah. He's been playing drums forever as well. Really? Yeah, he's, he's he's one of them people who just like freaks you out because he's capable of doing anything. Like, you know he's what I mean? Class. I remember on the on the US tour, he got a breakbeats kit. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. And yeah. it was so small compared to Owen because he, he's one of those like just fucking big guys he's, around the drum a, kit. He's a, a, like it's just like it, there's some people who play and they play and then there's people who are gorillas behind the drum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just pound them and yeah. he's that. Yeah. And then you put a breakbeats in front of him and it's like, what's the feel for that drum kit? Yeah. The drum kit's not going to last. 
but they, it was... well, no, in fairness, they do. They're very well put together. Brilliant drum very kits. Well, in... Very well built drum kits. <laughs> we'll qualify that there. Their their build quality second to none. Uh, available in three colours. Uh, yeah, fantastic, fantastic drums. Really, really stupendous, yeah, stupendous drums. Never go wrong with them. No, no. I mean, you know, to be honest, uh, I'd say uh, let's stop. Uh, uh, all right then. Um, so, Michal, you you first started playing drums at what sort of age? Um, I was 10, it was, a, it was a funny encounter. My mom came in and was like, what instrument do you want to learn? Because I've been learning piano and we were moving music schools. And I was like, the guitar, that's what I'm going to do, the guitar. <laughs> and uh, she came back and was like, yeah, they don't teach guitar. So I was like, oh, I guess the drums, so. Yeah. They're like, I'll pick them. As a, as a fall back, yeah. you know. I'll... And that was the best decision I ever made. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was, yeah, it was 10. And it was like a year on the snare drum. And then, then it was the kit from then on. Yeah, you, you got to play around with. <laughs> oh, it was the best thing yeah. ever. Yeah, it's it's the most wonderful progression, isn't it? After you've been just like you to this watching sort of people thing. play a kit, and you're like, that looks amazing. Yeah. But I'll just hit this. I had a lino pad or like lino matting, and, yeah, 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 and yeah. that was what I did. And I was like, playing the drums is a bit boring. <laughs> I'm not really into this. But I was like, no, I'll do that one day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was so that was, was that with like a, a group of people? No, or just my, just one on one lessons. Just one on one lessons. Yeah, yeah. So you're learning all the rudiments and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I was from ten until twenty three, twenty two. I was getting lessons the mm. whole time. It was that's an amazing thing. There was always yeah, and I had the same teacher for. <laughs> Just went for a while. Just came out of space. Ah, yeah. Just came out. Um, I had the same teacher from. It's, it's allowed, is it? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I had the same teacher from like, I think twelve until I stopped with him. Yeah. And that was the last teacher I had, and he, oh, he was great. I remember. I still think this. No one hits a snare drum as nice as he does. The, really. The sound he got off of it. No matter what he was handed. I always used to just sit there and be like, how does he do that? Yeah. What magic is going on here? Yeah, I find it incredible, um, the difference in, in a sound uh, from one person to the next. You could give someone the same stick as someone else, yeah. just the manner in which they throw it at a surface. It's going to be nuts. an entirely different sort of noise altogether. Like, yeah, and some people just have that little magic. Yeah. But I think everyone has their own sort of sound, their own, you know, you develop over That's years true. of playing, you develop sort of, well, even, even from the outset, just your natural sort of, whatever, the physiology, the way you're built, it influences greatly the way you sound, so far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's something I've always paid interest in, or, or had an interest in, was the idea that everyone sounds slightly different. You can give someone the same exact scenario, the same setup, the same kit, the same sticks, and they'll sound somewhat different. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. I always just knew the few people I loved the way they sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never put two and two together, I was like, it's, everyone has their sound. Aye, man, aye. No, there's, there's all sorts of things. I reckon there's all sorts of things that play into that. It's all conjecture anyway, isn't it really? Uh, Whatever conjecture means. Anyway, anyway, yeah, nonsensical nonsense. Big words. Big words. No, it's not big words. <laughs> I know, it's, it's, see, you spell it. Uh, it's ten, le ten letters. That's not spelling it. It's, no, but it's C O N G J E C T U R E. Conjecture. That's, that's right. Uh, that's, Spelling with Oshin. That's that's, yeah. that's what we'll do. We'll actually have to do a word of the week, I think. <laughs> uh, conjecture. Uh, CEO. No, we won't. We won't do that. That's probably not going to have great viewership. So you you had your lessons. Uh, what was your first sort of band experience then? Um, I remember recording Steelers Wheel stuck in the middle of you. My teacher taught bass as well, and he got <laughs> a guy who taught bass to a guy who taught guitar to, and me to record a song together no and I still have it somewhere <laughs> uh, it, yeah he was like right we're gonna record this song and it was the most exciting thing I've ever done I think yeah that's an incredible idea I, think like. I was 12 and went in and uh, it was just like right I got it in my head I was like this is probably the greatest thing I will ever do yeah, yeah, yeah. and just being so serious about it and uh, yeah, it's, I still have it somewhere so that was kind of the first working with other musicians right and then a year later I think he started a band between me and a few of the other guys he taught and we were called Orion first, and then we changed it about 20 minutes later to Anacrusis, because someone said that word and we thought it was cool. Okay. Anacrusis is a musical term for, oh, he's, oh, I don't know anymore. Okay. My music degree is failing me now. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> know that shit. Yeah. Uh, that was my first band experience, and then it was just constant. Yeah. Ever since then. From that point on, you thought, oh, this is something this I is just what wanted I'm to do. This is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. 
Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, um, that's cool. And so you kind of, I mean, with regards to gigging and such, did you, did you start playing from that sort of age or was no, it a few six, years later? No, 16 was the first ta- first gig I did. Okay. Uh, it was out in Setonians, I think. Setonians, like rugby club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we played like an hour and a half worth of covers, I think, to about 10 people. <laughs> that we, it was a gig we put on ourselves. Yeah. And uh, I remember one of the songs we did was Behind Blue Eyes by... The Who. Oh yeah. And I loved Keep Moon. I still do. But at that, at that age I had no self-awareness or control, so I just soloed my way through the whole song. I was like, that's what Keep Moon would do. Yeah, exactly. Do that's what he would that's what he'd do anyway. Like And the rest of the band just being like, This guy's an idiot. He doesn't know how to play the drums. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, 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 keep moon, keep moon. Yeah, but it's fairly exciting stuff, like you it's know, you're dead. playing your first gig and you get to play a Who song and it yeah. happens to be something that's, you know, all sorts of about the place. Uh, I always used to get really kind of Bothered by, I'd look at the, I'd look at Keith's moon setup, and it's like, but, but there's no hi hats. Just had a crash or a ride. Yeah, there. it was just, it was just all the symbols up in front of him, and he used to just dance around yeah. him and stuff. And that used to really trouble me. I'd look at it and I'd <laughs> see, I'd, I'd see no hi hats, and be like, but how does he play the beats? How does he play a beat like? <laughs> but he, that was the thing. He rarely played a beat. It was, it was, always, it was always like a thing. It was yeah. much more musical, I guess, it, or chaotic yeah but it, it was it was a different sort of way of thinking about drums it was like i mean i suppose if you, you'd look at a guitarist and, and the guitarist would be soloing now and again you'd think why wouldn't a drummer do that now and again you know <laughs> but not even like soloing all the time but just like a guitarist could play a line you know a, 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 a lick or whatever and at the end of the lick there'll be a little flourish or whatever yeah that's to me kind of what he was doing it would just, just be playing he'd be yeah. playing a lick and then there was a little flourish or whatever you know that sort of thing i remember being obsessed with him it was him and john bonham and yeah. I, I don't think you could have found two people who were as far apart because like they 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 were both great but john bonham was just sat in and was yeah. as hard as possible with the yeah, group. and yeah, then keith yeah. moon couldn't give a shit about grooves no no it he was, was just like i'm here to hit as many drums as fast as possible as quick and as loud as possible yeah yeah, yeah. and i love that yeah but i always thought if you put one of them into the other band both those bands would become some of the worst bands in history <laughs> <laughs> and those two drummers would become some of the worst drummers yeah. in history well yeah i can't <laughs> imagine they get nearly the same sort of you know <laughs> kudos that they do at the moment anyway yeah. uh, or, or that Definitely they have not. ever had uh, Oh, that's so bizarre, trying to think, trying to imagine Led Zepp with Keith Moon bashing oh, things and like, vice versa. Because like. there, was, there was talk of that. Once, was it John Bonham died first? Uh, I, I think can't. it was. Th- Ro would know. Oh, Ro's yes. release, yeah. I think it was. No, I could be entirely wrong. But okay. There was talk anyway of when one of them died, the other one being the guy who'd fill in. Right. And everyone was just like, why would you do that? That would be yeah. the worst decision imaginable. That doesn't make any sense Wait, Was whatsoever. there something about someone did a gig and it was atrocious? I don't know, there's something about the two of them crossing. Mm. I could be entirely wrong and made that up in a dream or something. I have no idea. I, I have know. no idea. But I think it would have been a very funny. Yeah. Keith Moon sat in on a. Is it true? Gig, yes. and there was we it, go. Was it a terrible? Yeah. It was supposed to be. Was it terrible? Yeah, it wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there we go. Yeah. Keith Moon sat in on a Led Zeppelin gig and. It wasn't great. It wasn't like, great. Imagine, <laughs> trying to, imagine trying to hear Keith Moon play Cashmere. Imagine trying to get him to do that, or when the levy breaks, to yeah. sit there with nothing but his hat, his bass drum, and his snare drum. He didn't even have a hat. That's the thing, <laughs> like, it's so much of a, a, a defining sort of surface in terms of how Bonham plays, like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be very bizarre. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be very interested to hear that and see what that sounds like. That's something totally alien as a concept oh, to me. Was. Yeah, that sounds amazing. We'll yeah. have to find that. We'll find that footage. We'll find Insert that footage now. Anyway, uh, yeah, so so Moon, Bonham, huge influences. Who else would you say would have had a, a um, fairly large role in, in terms yeah, of you? Th- those two were the big ones, I say, growing up, because I was a kid and they were like the gods. Yeah. Then the Buddy Rich as well. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just, it, 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 no one could play as fast as him ever. And as a kid, you're like, I want to be the fastest thing in the world. And yeah. you come across him, you're like, right, well, that's as fast, yeah. That, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Uh, then there was Taylor Hawkins from Foo Fighters. I just adored the way he mm. played. I there was just something about him, something about his character. I think a lot of it to do was, one was how they played the drums, and then two, what they were like. Yeah. That was, I had to match them up. And okay, Otherwise, yeah, yeah. they wouldn't be a drummer I'd be influenced by. Sure, sure. Um, all of the people you've mentioned were kind of larger than life characters as well, so yeah. like they were all kind of a little bit like mad or whatever. There was, some, they, there was something about them. Yeah. Like if it was just a guy, like say, Stuart Copeland, I was, he was amazing, but I just never resonated with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was just a guy who played the drums well. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, I guess so. I always thought there should be that level of chaos and excitement to them. I get you. Uh, Jack Beaven from Foles, when that album came out, 
I was quite, I was like 18 at that point. Sure. But that album really stuck with me, the drum line, because every song had a different distinctive drum beat, but they're it, all him, you could tell. It was very, very well structured, well put together yeah. in terms of, he, he had managed to kind of coin arrangements and very different things for, as yeah. you say, for each song. It was, I really, so he made a big, big impact on the mm. way I played. Um, who else growing up? I, don't know, I was always just watching all of the drummer. You, yeah. Do you know that? Yeah, sure. Dave Weckl, Steve Gadd, Vinnie Call You the video. Oh yeah. I watched the, that. Is that the, the Buddy Rich yeah. memorial, memorial thing? Yeah. 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 Do, 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 oh do, yeah, yeah. Do, do, they, they all take little solos and stuff like that. Uh, I watched that. I'd say three times a day, every day. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Or it was, and I was always trying to figure who I liked the most, and it changed it on a daily basis. Sure, sure, sure. Depending on what I noticed. Oh, man. But again, Steve Gadd, I liked him a lot. Yeah. Up. But again, with all of them, they, they were drummers behind a drum kit, and that was where they existed. Yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. The whole extra side of them, I didn't see, so I wasn't as, I'd say, enamored with them. Yeah, no, I get you. I, I, I totally understand and appreciate that concept. Yeah. I think, I think there would have been people, there would have been drummers that I would have been drawn to as a result of their sort of off-stage persona or whatever, yeah. you know? Because I think then it, it just adds to the drummer, because then when you hear the drum and you're like, that's why they sound like that, that's yeah. why they're doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought that was really important. Yeah. I used to be mad about Dave Grohl, absolutely mad about it. In fact, I still am <laughs> mad about <laughs> Dave Grohl. Be. Yeah, like, that's, that's ridiculous. I can never not be <laughs> mad about Dave Grohl. As a drummer, I think he's grossly underrated. Um, he, he, what he did with regards to, you know, grunge music in the 90s. I, I know, obviously, it wasn't just him, but, for me, he was at the forefront. Yeah, like, yeah. like it, it, you could name, I don't know. Well, you look at something like Smells Like Teen Spirit, which is such a definitive drum beat. It's such a, it's such that's, a. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. The Nirvana ones. Yeah. Almost every Nirvana song, the drum beat is as important as most riffs are for songs. Ah, yeah. And a lot of bands don't have that. Yeah, very much so. It's less about kind of carrying something as it is about you know being a part of. I don't know. Anyway, I'm talking nonsense. Uh, I, when he, you get to Dave Grohl, it's not nonsense. No, he 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 was uh, huge for me. Uh, I used to love all the earlier Foo Fighter albums. I remember the first Foo Fighter album actually. Oh, uh, uh, you know, Good Grief. Yeah, Good Grief. Um, well, sure, the, what's the, the, is it the first song on it? Uh, what's the first song on that album? Yeah. Oh, I keep on doing this where I just forget albums <laughs> in their entirety, like the, the running order or whatever. Um, no, Good Grief was the fifth. Floaty was number seven. Yeah. I don't know what the first song was. Big Me. Oh, I hate to call a cow. This is a call. I think to call a cow. To call a cow. It's that song, to call a cow, isn't it? This is a call. Just like woke me up to to rock drumming and, and stuff like that in, in a big yeah. way. I previously, I'd, I mean, I knew who the Chili Peppers were and I knew who, you know, Metallica was and obviously I'd heard a bit of Nirvana, but it was just, it was such a drum focused album. It was the first time I'd heard drums as like a, a kind of a, an instrument in the foreground, I suppose, because he's a drummer and he's writing songs from a perspective of knowing knowing where everything's going to yeah, be. Yeah. You know, it's not a drummer trying to, you know, uh, bring out the best of a song on behalf of a songwriter or whatever, you know, on, or, or for a songwriter. It's it's a, a drummer who's writing everything. And I think you hear that and it's very drum centric. Anyway, that album yeah. just, just totally turned me on to, to that sort of style of music and Dave Grohl in particular. And then I think uh, why Taylor Hawkins works is that he's able to do that with the same sort of conviction and energy that Dave Grohl did. Yeah, and it, the fact that Dave trusts him so much. That's it, like, you that's it. You have to just... Ah, yeah, uh, like, oh man. I remember that album just blowing my mind anyway. And then a few other... What was the first one that Taylor Hawkins was on? Oh, was There's um, Nothing Left to Lose. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, again, it was like seamless transition. From, you wouldn't, yeah, if you wouldn't notice that it was a different drummer. Yeah. Or like something from, what was it, Colour in the Shape? Colour in the Shape. For that. Yeah, yeah. They recorded loads of that sitting down. Not Colour in the Shape, but... Um, there's nothing left to lose. Drummers will normally sit down at a kit, though, <laughs> Michal. Huh? Yeah. Uh, I know with Melty Brains, it's not always the case. <laughs> it's not you're sitting at a drum kit, like, but... Uh, sitting yeah. down, that's an idea. Sitting down, yeah. No, it's good. It's, it, it, these things... Um, I was wondering, what is this? Still. Still. Stills. For, for drums. Never heard of that. Yeah. <clears throat> it's good Excuse stuff. Me. It's good stuff. Enemies keep on going on about like, why aren't you sitting down? And why aren't, like, why you, yeah. aren't you sitting down? What's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> where you, you have a seat, pal. <laughs> yeah. That's one thing, actually. I, I don't think I could stand up on a stage. No? I feel, I just, when I look at other lads standing up playing, I'm like, that's, isn't that really weird? Yeah. Standing up on a stage, like, why don't you sit down and <laughs> sit down? Yeah, like, it's, it's a strange thing, actually, how that 
that's come to pass that it's just accepted that a guitarist is going to be standing up walking around <laughs> yeah. sting around their neck like imagine you with a drum kit that your pedals were also like bike things uh, pedals oh no yeah you... <laughs> <laughs> where are you going with this talk about that. cycling around yeah, with a yeah, kit yeah. so your kit's on a um, what's it on? on a like a stand that has wheels on it right. and your pedals are also pedals okay. so when you play they pedal it All right. so you're able to move around the stage <laughs> so as a guitarist so walking around yeah, yeah, you're yeah. also just wandering around the stage that would be amazing <laughs> that would be absolutely incredible I like the idea you're going and like you know they're like like get down to a lad in the crowd with a guitar and you're there like cycling around the stage like the, oh that sounds amazing drummers are neglected in fairness you, you sit you sit at the back behind loads of stuff it obscures you <laughs> Um, I mean, you could be the best looking member of a band and no one would ever know. Yeah. You know what I mean? No one would ever know, even though it's, uh, you know. They have no idea. They have no <laughs> idea. But I mean, generally speaking, it would be the case that, I mean, this, Look at you, this know, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. you, you know, you get to. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ro as well. Ro is an absolute stud. There he is. Oh. Yeah, and, and you just, you wouldn't know how good looking he is. You know what I mean? Because he's hidden by drums and such. So you're just back from a tour. Uh, yeah. Well, you're just back. You're back, what, about three weeks or so? Four weeks a month? Oh, I don't know. I'm from the Enemies tour, that was the end of April. And then that as soon the as that April. ended, it was like 10 days. This is 10 days in visual form. Yeah. That's a visual representation yeah. of 10 days. And, uh, oh, do you know the Sting song, Seven Days? Yeah. Oh, I love that to drum on that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of my favourite things. I used to try and do that. I, I don't think I ever nailed it, but I, I, I remember I'd walk into school with my, uh, at the time, mini disc player. Mm -hmm. oh, I never got one um, of those. I, I got a mini disc player and I just made like compilations. I'd, I'd have, uh, or a friend of mine actually had a kind of one of those decks where you could copy across certain, like you'd have a blank mini disc on one side and then you'd put a mini disc into the other and you could choose a song and copy that one across. That's amazing. And so you'd make yourself a little mix on mini disc, like, um, <laughs> but yeah, I remember listening to that song uh, over and over and over again. Just and I think I got a lot of grief off a mate of mine in school for the fact that I was listening to the same song all the time. It's like, you've just listened to that three times already. <laughs> Stop listening to that song. That's, that's not how it works. It's an amazing tune. Oh, it's anyway, uh, sorry. So where that was we? seven days and this, the, ten days, ten after, days that, after that. I headed off then with Melty Brains. Okay. So it was we were in. So I was in America for. I mean, no, fuck, it started 29th of January. Right. Melody Brain started touring around Ireland. Okay. Every weekend for like two months. Yeah. Then Enemies went away for the five weeks. Then I got back, went away for a week with Melody Brains. Yeah. Then got back from that, went away for another week in it, or yeah, a week in England with Melody Brains. Okay. And then it stopped. So it was like over the span of like five months. My word. On and off. And it was, it was fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it was, isn't it? Oh, it's fun. Yeah. Just like, there's no. I had this realization one of the days in the van, driving around with enemies, mm. and we were in the van for eight hours, and I was just sitting there being like, no one can contact me, no one's gonna bother me, no one wants me to do anything. <laughs> All I have to do is listen to music and wait to go play the drums. Yeah. How could I ask for a better day? And it was just... It's pretty cool. Oh, it, was, it was wonderful. Yeah. So yeah, the touring was great, yeah. and playing, playing shows every night just, it got better and better mm -hmm. as time went on. Mm. It was just... You just sort of sat into this groove of I'm just playing drums. Oh, it's it's the most wonderful thing when you kind of get toward tight and and, and just comfortable. Toward, toward yeah. tight is it's amazing. It's bliss. Oh, it's, it, you reach that sort of point where every night you're looking forward to getting up and you, you remember the bits that you absolutely nailed the previous night or a couple of nights back or whatever. Yeah. And you're just waiting for those bits to come around thinking I am absolutely going to ream this I am gonna <laughs> I am just gonna make this sound so good in a few moments time uh, yeah that and then, was and then you drop your stick <laughs> no and then and then, you, and then you're actually amazing like it. yeah um, I didn't I didn't have that experience uh, of course you did sure it shows with like the the like all the the, the footage from the tour like that you did the audio tree session that was in Chicago oh, wasn't the it drum sound on that yeah. Oh, I fucking love that drum sound. Yeah. Oh, when we got sent that, I was like, that's what those drum sounds are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was that's beautiful. That's what drums are? <gasps> <laughs> yeah, um, it was lovely. Yeah, that's a very cool experience. Like, But, but you could see good. that you guys had already been on the road for a little while. Like. Yeah, it was good when that was timed, because yeah. it was like, I think it was like 20 shows in or something. Yeah. Whereas if that had been at the start, it would have been this shocking display of, what did you just do there? Oh, yeah, keep playing, sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or like finishing and then someone stopped. Oh, shit. <laughs> I could, there I, is a bit, though, where... I, it was in We've Been Talking, and I wasn't paying attention, and because uh, I do that a lot. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> you know it goes, da -da -da -da, boom, da -da. I missed that bit, so you hear the drums go, do 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 
Oops. and the camera cuts to me and I'm just laughing my head off because I've missed it <laughs> just at Mark be like whoops it is yeah it happens <laughs> I, I love those bits because they're what make it normal or yeah. they're what make it like real well, they're, what, they're what make everything different or what makes everything different every, every time you play a song there's some sort of there's something different about it or yeah. whatever and I think the more mistakes you make the better you get at making mistakes and the better you're able to laugh at yourself yeah. because, you know if you if like make make a terrible balls or something and then if you go fuck and it ruins it yeah the more you make those mistakes the more you're like right I made another mistake grand and then eventually you're able to just laugh it off yeah I, and I, I think that I think like that's... So, oh, my, to get to one of my other favourite drummers is Robert Spot C. Wright. Oh, yeah. I, he is just everything in my world mm -hmm. at the moment. And one of the reasons is because you see him mess up and he just laughs at himself. And yeah. he's like on this world stage with one of the best, what I think are the greatest band ever. Yeah. And he's messing up and he's just like, so what? I'm playing. But, yeah, and yeah. I love that. It's that, sorry, that's that concept of uh, you're there to share a moment with with a group of people and that moment it doesn't have to be the same the, the, a recreation of that that same moment from a record or from yeah. the night before or from the night before that or whatever I like the idea that things can be spontaneous uh, and I think that's just part of it I think I like the idea I used to whenever I was playing uh, you know a couple of the tunes for instance I used to like to try and change things up every time I play them or whatever yeah I think just, it's necessary just do something different for one for your own sanity yeah and then do just for the fun of it and to yeah. find it because you find new things you're like I didn't know I could do that because yeah, when yeah, you're under yeah. pressure you just have to go for it yeah absolutely I think it's kind of I compare I watch a lot of skate videos right and I compare drumming to skateboarding a lot yeah I, I think a lot of music is like skateboarding one is the attitude skaters have is that you don't give up you just keep you keep falling you break your arm you get them and just go again yeah and then you get one moment of glory after mm. like five hours and you just you land it and that's, that's it so with say a fill or something like with that thing the weather box thing i was yeah, trying to yeah, get yeah. i kept messing it up and i was like i'm gonna land this yeah yeah, yeah. and that's the that's the phrase i use now for fills and like i have to land that fill okay right and you just you, you fuck it up and then you're like right tomorrow i'll try again yeah and then the moment you do i don't know why i'm making this point but no no no. but it's a, it's, it's an important point it's a very important point i like the idea that that uh, yeah it, it 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 opens the door we were we were talking oh, about like uh, yeah. the the idea of spontaneity it opens the door for you to be able to do more things yeah because you're under pressure you have to yeah you have to get it well you you, you have to at least try and get it right you know exactly, what i mean you yeah. have to intend to to get it right but uh yeah i like the idea of um of it opening doors, of it being some sort of something that you can lean on to, to you know, find something new that you didn't think that you could do or whatever, as you said. Yeah it's, uh, yeah, it's a very good place to be. It's a good thing to do. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. And then this happened on tour. Mm -hmm. And then that happened on tour, yeah. That's so that... Yeah, you were, you got scared up. Yeah, mm. so my... I think every symbol I own is broken at this stage. Right. I think, because I... Oh, well, I knock them over a lot and I, like play through them because my deep down philosophy is they're made to be hit so I'm going to hit them. Right. And it's probably not good because I'm breaking a lot of, I break sticks like, I go through pairs of sticks. I'm astonished because you, you use like uh, oh, it's, one it's A's so, or three no, I'm A's. On five B's at the moment. You're on five B's and now. I hate, yeah. Like I hate them. They're okay. so thick but if I, what I want to use is Buddy Riches because I love them. They're yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. But I break a pair every couple of songs now and it's like I'm definitely doing something very wrong well no I mean like it's, 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 it is what it is yeah it's just you're, you're just glad to be playing drums yeah. uh, that manifests in, in generally speaking <laughs> just being you know all about hitting, hitting things yeah but, so all my cymbals are cracked mm. and there was one I, I found this cymbal in a hallway it's an unbranded cymbal no stamp no marking or anything yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a toy but okay. it sounds so good oh, yeah. but instead of cracking this one just bent so the symbol was just full of these massive dents and then oh, yeah. one night a massive crack just appeared and that was in Philly and then in Boston it was like proper going so I was like that's not very safe I better get rid of that so I grabbed the symbol like this and ripped it and I ripped down into it and the bit just sliced into my thing oh my god that's on my so, wrist that's disgusting it was and it was caught on film as well or almost because I had cut this finger I caught it in a hi-hat <laughs> <laughs> I do that a lot I often have a like you can see like that I often have a scab there right okay I don't think my like I physical coordination is very good <laughs> so I clamped you told me you're a drummer <laughs> that's nonsense <laughs> like I catch my um my shoelaces open. I catch my 
hand in the hi hat. Right. A lot. So after the show, Mark was like, "Shows your hand. There's blood everywhere." And I was like, "Yeah." Before I do that, though, my symbol's broken. Yeah. And that's let's just, let's just fix this. <laughs> I did that and then poof, went open about that wide. Oh my god. And I just looked at it and I was like, "Was it like proper?" No, because I hit a vein. I didn't hit an artery. So it was just okay. something else. Okay. 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 But that's... I looked at it and I was like, "That's." That's a people. Yeah, that's let's not. Doctor. Let's not. Oh, fuck! I'm in a lot of trouble. Yeah. And just held it up, and I was like, Mar so the footage just goes from like, show us that meal. Like, oh, ambulance, <laughs> get a paramedic. <laughs> and then the next <laughs> bit of footage is just me in an ambulance. It's like, uh, don't know what we're doing. Is there going to be like footage released of this? Or? Uh, I don't know. We we filmed everything. So there's there's a music video made from a lot of the footage. Okay. As like a tour music video thing, yeah. but I. I'd say there's enough in there to make a fun little thing for people to watch. A little tour doc. Yeah, I think it'd be good to do. I think it'd be great to do. Yeah, I, we did one with Melody Rains in Canada. All right. I brought a real shitty camera along and uh, just filmed everything all week. And then when I got home, I was like, right, I'm gonna edit this. And I was like, oh, I'm not asked. So I just put it all in sequence and yeah. just cut out the crap. So it's about 40 minutes long. <laughs> oh, and it's, it's just utter nonsense. And there's yeah, bits, yeah. bits of music in it, but I think that's. Like, when I look for bands that I like, I like to find that sort of footage of them, because you're like, right, they're just idiots playing yeah. music. I suppose it's, it's yeah, it's beautiful. Re being relatable is an important thing, or, or finding kind of relatability, or re relatableness, whatever it is. It's just a human, because, like, you put people on such a high pedestal, like, yeah. they're a god, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you see them, like... Just being a person. Yeah, and you're like, oh, grand, yeah. grand. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing when someone becomes kind of human to you or whatever. Like, I would have always thought that Keith Carlock is this, like, deity, this figure of, <laughs> uh, you know... Just for groove and sound beauty, man. Uh, well, just, just, I mean, the intensity, the... the, the, the you know that he plays as well? Or is it this way? Which way is it's, it? Well, he kind of... He, well, he plays trad, so there's a little bit of a kind of a lean on his part, but uh, it's just... I would always look at him and think, you know, that's unattainable. That's, that's more than human, in a sense. That's something that... It's so extraordinary as, a, as a, an ability and, and a, a skill. And meeting him, and he's just this real beautifully down-to-earth, nice guy. Uh, just like being able to, as you say, humanize someone, being able to see you know, that they are just a normal person or whatever. It was a wonderful thing. Yeah. Uh, I, have to, I have this thing about it. It's that, like, that's this unattainable mm. amazingness of drumming. And to be perfectly honest, was points of the Enemies albums where I was like, that's that's beyond the grasp of nah. playing. But what I realized then is all of those, like, so your Aaron Spears, Chris Dave's yeah. all, well, Chris, I don't know, Chris Dave might go to a different bracket slightly, but. He's an all, alien, like, yeah. yeah. But all of it is doable. Yeah. It's not this, like, other world of you can never play that. If you want to, you can play it. You just mm. have to try enough and keep yeah. it going, and then you'll figure it out. That's it. But Chris Dave, I think, exists in his own little. He's, he's in a little, something else going on little sort of him. bubble. Um, yeah. There's a guy uh, who comes in here regularly enough, Smiley. Um, he's, only, he's only very young, I think he's 17 or 18 years old. He is an absolute monster of a drummer. Um, and, but he said something uh, which I thought was incredibly impressive, first of all, at that age, and second of all, well, for any age whatsoever. The idea that if you can think something, you can play it. You know, so if, if you can think of a specific sort of thing, as it were, then, then there's no reason why you couldn't apply you know, your it's ability amazing. to it. But it makes sense. It yeah, makes yeah, total I've... sense. Like, um, That's it, good, though. It, it's, yeah, well, it's, it's absolutely the truth. He the, was yeah, totally there's, right. There's so much importance that, because a lot of people put themselves down about their playing. It's like, yeah. oh, I'll never do that. And like, yeah. oh, well, you won't with that attitude. Yeah, like, like they, you, you can choose to want to do it, yeah. or, or you can choose to, to let it pass you by and, and, and feel defeatist and give yourself an excuse or a reason to, to never have to bother it, you know, with, with yeah. putting that work or that effort in or whatever. Um, it was, is, the, it was the ghost notes in Executive Cut. I remember hearing them be like, right, well, that's... don't know if I'm going to get that. And I remember resigning. I was like, right, I'll just... Maybe that song just won't have ghost notes anymore. And then I was like, oh, but I could just try a little harder. Yeah. And it, only kept on working. I was like, okay, now I can do it. Yeah. And it was like, wait a minute. I remember, I, I remember sitting down with you, actually, going right through there. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, oh, that chorus. Uh, oh, that was so good! You should you should hear the amount of times I I cock that up live though. Uh, and when you do, you're like, right, okay, you gotta find him. Okay, there we go. We're back I, again. I, I can't <laughs> even begin to to imagine the amount of times I cock that up live. It's really it's it's. it's and you know when you're because that's a that's an excitable song. Yeah. It's, that, it's towards the end of the set generally. And yeah, yeah. Like I'll count in way too fast, and then Louis will launch in real fast as well because I've given him like yeah, yeah. off you go. And then you're in such a place that you're like, <laughs> I've, oh, I've, you're, you're, yeah, the do like the realization <laughs> dawns on you like halfway through a verse that you've got to play this kind of slightly more intricate part. Yeah, in a you few can moments. see it coming. And you're like, yeah. 
Hey, good luck. Yeah, yeah. Good luck to me. Good luck, Hans. You got this. I'm going to zone out. You have to kind of steel yourself for the invariable and <laughs> inevitable kind of like uh, panic attack yeah. in a moment. There was, there was yeah. a thing as well in, in England with Melty Brains where um, we were playing and we started late because of something, I don't know, but it wasn't our fault. The promoter started us late or something, so then he was like, you got to cut us on. And yeah. We were just like, no, no, we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep on playing. <laughs> but so then we got to our last song, Donegal, and Brian played it faster than normal. Right. Donegal is like about 140, 150 Yeah, it's normally. a fairly, that's the, it's kind of it's like, like a drum and bass, bass, bass yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but, so, and I generally speed up as we go on because I get excited. Yeah. I'm like, right, let's go faster. Yeah. But then we got to the end section and it's like, and we were playing it about 160, 100, no, 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 I counted after it was 180 we played it at. Oh God. And it was, and it was the fastest I've ever had to do it. And it, I could see it coming and like my hands were just kind of falling, seizing up all along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praying that I'd make it through, just like, watching it all happen. You kind of hold a stick like a claw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no technique anymore. Yeah, and it's yeah. slipping away like, I hope this is over soon, I hope yeah, it's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that like it's, it, that's that's it's two hands on the hat, isn't it? It's like a fairly it's, intensive it's on, like it's on a it's a chopper. Oh no, sorry, you've a symbol on the on the a snare drum. On the yeah, snare yeah, drum yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember seeing you play that in uh, in the Olympia when you were uh, supporting, and so I watch you. That yeah, was, that yeah, was the song that. you kind of finished with, I think. That's, that was our last song. Yeah, yeah, and then you jumped on top of a, a big amp. That's generally the vibe. That seems to be the. Yeah. We got last year at Body and Soul before Body and Soul because two years ago at Electric Picnic we hmm. got um. Our friend Jack, the Jack, Jack is like my best friend. Sure. He's just, oh, he's the best. Okay. And uh, he, he, he thinks, <laughs> I, I like Jack a lot. A he's lot of people, good lad. He's a good lot of people lad, yeah. think that me and Jack have a relationship. I like, well, we do. Yeah. But I think it's a lot more than yeah. it is. But there it is. Oh, yeah. I'm glad Jack has gotten into this. 